This video is playable in high definition or HD in 720p and I think you'd find it much easier to see and read what's on screen if you toggle the HD video on using the gear shape button located near the lower right hand corner of your player window. In addition I would encourage you to use the large player window which can also be toggled using the rectangular button that's located near the lower right hand corner of your player window. In this video we're going to look at some examples of scatter diagrams and correlation and linear regression. And the first example that we're going to use is the one you can see on the screen in front of you right now. It's number 26. It has to do with credit scores. You'll notice that there are two lists of information there. And it's important to understand uh, the way we look at that information when we're working our way through chapter 4. In algebra we talk about x and y values but in statistics we have different names that we use for those and so you'll find that in chapter 4 when we talk about an explanatory variable what we're talking about is an x value and when we talk about a response variable what we're talking about is a y value and so when you key this information into the calculator it's very important that you key it in in the same way what I mean is if you key in list 1 going from top to bottom then you're going to key in list 2 going from top to bottom as well because these numbers are paired. So the 545 is paired with the 18.92 and the 595 is paired with the 17.967 and so on. But it's not paired like you would think. When you look at the calculator you can see I have the data for list 1 here that's the credit scores and I have the data for list 2 here that's the corresponding interest rates and so it has to be keyed in exactly as you see in the table. It's not always true in some some cases, you know, like in chapter two or, or later, when we have tabular data, we can key it in in many different ways. But this data has to be keyed in systematically. And so you need to go and, and basically copy it from the book to your calculator. And so what I would encourage you to do at this time so you can follow, because what you're going to see is that our author is going to use the same data set for several different problems. So we're going to be seeing this again in, in a different example and we'd like you to be able to follow along. So I'd invite you to pause the video and key in this data right here into your calculator. Now once you have the data keyed in, we're being asked in part A here, which variable do you believe is likely the explanatory variable and which is the response variable? Sometimes you can make a case for it going either way, but in this case I think it makes the most sense that the credit score would be treated as the explanatory variable or the x value and the interest rate would be treated as the response variable or the y value. Reason being is that uh, typically when you go to get a loan the first thing they do is they look at your credit score and so the credit score that you have determines the type of rate you're going to get. And so we typically regard x values as input values and we regard y values as output values. And so in this case, I think it makes the most sense to treat the credit score as the explanatory variable. What they're really asking you when they ask that is, what are you going to use as your x value? And so it's important to understand what they're asking. Now in part b, they're asking us to draw a scatter diagram of the data. And so obviously you have to have that uh, data keyed into your calculator if you want to use it for that you can see again that I have list 1 and list 2 containing this data and so in order to do a scatter plot here's what you need to do you go to your stat plot menu and you need to turn one of your plots on and so uh, I'll just pick the first one there and I'll turn it on and then you need to make sure you have the right type of plot configured and so the one that's flashing right now is the one that we want that is a scatter plot so you press enter to affirm that and you can now see that the screen changes slightly and now they're asking what's your X list and what's your Y list. Well the X list would be your explanatory variable and the Y list would be your response variable and you can see that we have the correct list there. The mark is what's going to appear on the scatter plot in order to represent that data. And So at this point you're ready to graph that and so as usual you would want to do a zoom stat and you can see that the scatter plot appears on the screen then. Now, typically we're going to be asking you to do this scatter plot in conjunction with some other things. And so it's probably good to know how to make the window uh, a little bit cleaner. Because as you may recall, 
zoom stat doesn't always deliver the perfect window. It's usually good, but it's not exactly what we want. And so we want to clean this window up a little bit. One of the things I always do when I'm making a scatter plot is I like to have a little bit of breathing room around the data because typically I'm going to be asked related questions and if you cannot see what it is you're looking for on the on the screen you're going to find that the calculator will not cough it up. And so uh, I'm going to just widen up the window here a little bit. I'm looking at the X values and they go from 524 to 770 and I'm thinking well you know what would be wrong with going from say 500 to 800. Let's make a nice round uh, window size. And as far as the scale, an X scale of 1 is way too small. In this case, X scale refers to the distance between the hash marks which appear on the X axis. And the calculator doesn't have the capacity to display that large of a number of hash marks, more than 300 if you're using a scale of 1. So I would go with a more appropriate scale, probably 50 or something like that. And that'll get some on the, on the window there for me. And then as far as the Y values, it goes from a little bit uh, above 2 there to a little bit above 21. And again, I would, I would probably just go for some nice run values. Let's go from 0 to 25. And the Y scale of 1, eh, that's probably not good. Let's change it to 5. And so now we're going to get a nicer looking graph, as you can see. And so we have hash marks on the X axis, and we have a little bit of breathing room around the data there. And so that's the answer to part B right there. And typically, if we were having you do this, it would be on screen, as you see. Part C is asking that you would determine the linear correlation coefficient between the FICO score and the interest rate. Now, what they're asking for is something very specific. The correlation coefficient is known as the R value. It's something you can read about in this section here. Uh, how do you get the calculator to cough that up? Well, the first thing you got to do, you got to quit this here. The calculator will not cough up the R value by default. You have to turn that feature on. And so what you want to do is go to the catalog, which is second zero, and you want to scroll down to the commands that begin with the letter D. We're looking for a command called diagnostic on. We're getting close. Okay, it's right there on the screen. Let me motor up to it so you can see. That command right there is the one that turns on the automatic display of the correlation coefficient and another coefficient that we're going to need later. So you definitely want to do this. You press enter to select it and then you press enter to run it. And so now the calculator will give you your correlation coefficient. And this is how you would go about getting it. You go to the stat menu and you go to the calc menu and we're going to use the function number four here, the linear regression function and this is the one which will cough up the correlation coefficient by default. So to run it, you select number four and the lists that it's going to look at are list one and list two by default, but you can tell it what list you want. In this case, I'll make a point of telling it list one and list two. And so you can see right here on the screen your correlation coefficient is the very last value that's given right there. R equals zero minus 0 0.9758. And you know, typically if we're reporting something like that to software like MyLab and Mastering, or if we're writing it down on an exam, um, we'd probably like to see three places. So I would probably report that as minus 0 0.976. Part D is asking, does a linear relation exist between the FICO score and the interest rate? They're asking you to look at the screen of the calculator here. And when you look at the graph, they are asking, does that look linear to you? Now, it looks pretty linear to me. And so um, based on the R value, the correlation coefficient, I would say that this is strong. Uh, well, it's a strong linear correlation, and it has a negative correlation as well. So in other words, a large value in the explanatory variable produces a small value in the response variable and vice versa. That's what negative correlation looks like. And so in response to part D, I would say, does a linear relation exist? Yes, it does. It's a negative correlation and it's a very strong negative correlation. The next example that we're going to be looking at is number 34 here, which has to do with male versus female drivers, and it's uh, dealing with accidents. 
Now, uh, you're going to need to key this information in, and the age data, you don't need to bother keying in. The position of the numbers in the list will tell us uh, what it correlates with in terms of age. So you're going to need four different lists in order to key this data in. You'll use one list for the number of licensed male drivers, and then the number of fatal crashes, and then a third list for the number of female drivers, and then a fourth list for the number of fatal crashes. And this data also is going to be used uh, quite a bit. And so I would invite you to pause the video and key this into your calculator. Now as you can see, I already have the data keyed in. I've taken the time to key it in. And so I have it stashed from list three to list six. And so list three is the number of male drivers in thousands, and list four is the number of fatal crashes and so on. And so I entered this the same way that I entered the data from the previous example. I go from top to bottom on all of the lists because the numbers are paired. The 12 is paired with the 227. The 6424 is paired with the 5180, and so on. So what are they asking me to do here? Well, they want me to draw uh, scatter plots for both sets of data on the same graph. And so we wanted to show you how to do that. You go back to the calculator, and um, you're going to use two separate stat plots, and you're going to use the same window to display them both. It's a simultaneous display. So to pull this off, you go back to your stat plot menu, and uh, we already have plot one turned on, but we need to edit it and send it to the right lists. And so in this case, for my calculator data, I'm going to send the X list to list three, and the Y list will be X or list four. And um, I'll use a box uh, to represent the male data. And then to get to plot, uh, or to get the second scatter plot going, the, the fastest way is to simply go up here to the very top of the, of the screen and move the cursor over to plot number two like that, and then press enter. And so then the first thing you have to do is uh, turn the plot on, press enter to make the on highlighted and flashing. It's already set as a scatter plot, and that's fine and we want to redirect it to the correct list. So I have the number of female drivers in list 5, and I have the number of fatal crashes in list 6. And so that I can differentiate between the two data sets, I'm going to use a plus sign for the female data. And so at this point, I'm ready to get the scatter plot on the screen. I just have to zoom 9 that. And um, the window size probably needs to be adjusted a little bit. You can see that the axes look really fat because the number of hash marks is wrong. So if I go to the window, you can see that the X values are going from, uh, wow, they're covering quite a bit of range there. We don't have any negative numbers of drivers, so I think I'm comfortable making that a zero. And then for this, I'll just go to a nice round figure, let's say 25,000. And then for the scale, 50 is obviously way too small. I'll go with a scale of 5,000, one hash mark every 5,000 units. Now for the Y values, again, I don't have any negative numbers of crashes, and so I'm going to go from 0. And uh, let's go for a nice round value. Let's go for uh, 10,000. I don't, I don't recall any of the data being larger than that. And then for an appropriate scale, yeah, I'll go with a scale of uh, one hash mark every 1,000 units. And so now I think you'll find that the graph is much more agreeable. It is a bit confusing, though, because you have both data sets displayed. So that is the answer to part A right there, is the, the dual display or the simultaneous display of, of both scatter plots. Let's see what they're asking for part B. The problem is asking in part B here, based on the scatter diagrams, do you think that insurance companies are justified in charging different insurance rates for males and females? Well, I would say yes, because take a look. It's a little, again a little bit confusing, but if you, if you select the male data only, so in other words, you would want to turn off the second stat plot. The second stat plot is the one that contains the data for the females. 
So I'll just turn that off for a short time and then go back to the graph. This is the data for the males here. Now it's not quite as linear as the previous example, but there's definitely a linear trend as you can see. And the slope of that, the correlation in other words, is, is fairly high. The, the, the slope is strongly positive. So in other words, a large value in the explanatory variable produces a correspondingly large value in the response variable. Whereas when you look at the female data, let's turn this plot off here. And then let's go and turn the female data back on. There's a linear relationship there, but a large value in the explanatory variable produces a much smaller value in the response variable. And so in response to the question, based on the scatter diagrams, do you think that insurance companies are justified in charging different insurance rates? Yes, I do. And the reason is because it looks like for an equivalent number of drivers, the males tend to have more fatal crashes, and that's expensive from an insurance company perspective. Now parts C, D, and E have to do with the correlation coefficient. And so we're going to need to compute those correlation coefficients for both data sets. And you have to do it one at a time. So if you recall, the way that we would get the calculator to cough up a correlation coefficient would be as follows. You go to the stat menu, you go to the calc submenu, and you're going to use the function number four, linreg, which is an abbreviation for linear regression. So I'm going to do the male data first. If you recall, the data was stored in list 3 and list 4 on my calculator. And so the correlation coefficient here is 0 0.883, which is fairly high. Let's go and take a look at the, uh, the female data. Again, we go to stat, go to calc, and we would do linreg on list 5 and list 6. And so the correlation coefficient is 0 0.836. And so in response to the question here, it says in part C, compute the linear correlation coefficient between the number of licensed driver and the number of fatal crashes for males. We did. It was about 0 0.883, if I recall. And then part D was saying compute the linear correlation coefficient for the females. Well, we just did. And again, it was 0.836. And then regarding part E here, it says, which gender has the stronger linear correlation or the stronger linear relation between the number of licensed drivers and the number of fatal crashes? It's the men. And the reason is because the value of the correlation coefficient is higher, slightly higher than for females. I hope that's been helpful. Uh, please don't delete those two data sets because we're going to be using them again for several examples. And so if you would, click the link and take, the, take a look at the next video in the series.